Oh, you might send them a pencil. All right, go ahead. All right, Shalom. We're the Hebrew Israelites coming in week in and week out, prophesy the downfall of America, which is spiritually uh, Saddam and Egypt in the scriptures. Uh, but first and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Harakakwadash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders at GMS. Shalom uh, to the uh, brothers pushing this work in truth and sincerity. So, hey, we're recording ourselves. Why you gotta record? Us? Oh, I wanna record you too. You talking about I'll God, give, right? I'll give you a, I'll give you our YouTube channel. You can watch it. Ah, okay, okay. And I give It'll you one. It'll be better because then you can see the whole thing. Okay, and I give you one from him. Live happy with Mark. Hold on, hold on. You go to YouTube and you find out one right there. Go to YouTube right now. I'll tell you what to put in. Okay. Hey, brother, got something? Um. Yeah, because we're, hey, we're at the time of the end. People are going to be inquiring more about this truth anyway. You know? Okay, YouTube. All right, you are on YouTube? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Speak. Go ahead speak. All right, go on. Yes, and like the brother said, we're at the end. Okay, and our job is to come out here and warn the people. Uh, you got some more? Okay, you uh, get us a kill of 31, I believe. Uh, let's see. Be happy with my Don't be sad. Don't cry. Don't see the video. You always make me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you have a lot of videos. I didn't know. Hey, because we're hey, this is what we're out here to do is to preach the truth and to edify, which means that we're out here to teach. We're out here to teach people about the gospel, right? We're set up for the defense of the gospel because over the years, all right, Esau has perverted the gospel. All right, you got all these different churches and off branches. You got Catholicism, you got Protestants, you got Christians, you got Baptists, you got this, that, and the third, Mormons. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Mormons and something else. You got all these different religions and doctrines out there that have been perverted by Esau, which are the Edomites, all right, so-called white people today, all right, which I say so-called white Edomites are red Hebrew. Uh, even mics, right? So they've been done perverted the gospel. So we're out here as a defense. So lucky for a defense as the, of the gospel, meaning that we defend the the integrity of the words of the scriptures by bringing it out raw and uncut in the way that it's supposed to be brought out. Now, all right, because we have the actual understanding of the Bible. All right, and the majority of these people out here they don't have it. All right, it's only given to a certain few people. All right, according to a, a description, it tells you, I, re I revealed my secrets unto my servants, the prophets. All right, and so the ones that are out here on the street corners that are prophesying, which means to tell you what's going to happen before it happens. All right, these are the prophets of, of today, the Yahweh Shem Shai, which is the Lord and His Son, are raising up in the end, in the end days, the last days, all right, the end game, right? The last days to preach the gospel in truth and in sincerity, so to warn and to admonish and to let everybody know what's actually going to happen, all right? And not not uh, giving you some fairy tale that these Edomites came up with, man. All right? Brother Nassim. <clears throat> this is uh, Philippians chapter 1, uh, verse 15. It says, Some indeed preach the Mashiach, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Yeah, some some preach in, of envy and strife. All right, meaning they're, they're out here on their own agenda. They just want to curse people out. They're angry about something, or they want to they want to prove they want to prove something, or maybe uh, they got offended and they're just out there just to be out there to be like, oh, look at me, I'm still out here, fool. What the fuck are you gonna do about it? You know, preach envy and strife, or they want another man's position. So they're out there preaching, trying to trying to be uh, uh, the big name or the big name in Israel or whatever, you know, whatever kind of weird uh, uh, shit that somebody might have in their mind to preach to, to preach for, right? And some of goodwill. All right, go ahead. The one preach a Mashiach of contention, not sincerely. Not sincerely. See, go ahead. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Hey, maybe you got another brother that's out here just cursing you out for no reason. Adding affliction to your bonds, man. Alright? Or they're out there preaching the wrong thing, the wrong doctrine, being hard-headed. Alright? Adding affliction to your bonds. Why? Because it's your job to be like, hey, man, you do it. You, you, 
preaching the wrong thing, you know? And you got guys that constantly getting reproved out here, all right, because they're continuously being hard-headed preaching the wrong thing, man. No, and, and, and most of them, like Nate and them, they know that they're preaching the wrong thing, but they're doing it, all right, because they, they want to keep that, that name that they have for themselves, man. They want to keep that big congregation, all right? They don't want to go, they don't want to, basically like martial arts, you were a black belt, and then you left and started doing some weird shit, you come back and you gotta be a white belt all over again. You know, they don't want to go through that. Just like uh, back in the New Testament, they didn't want to lose their seat because the other saw was on the seat. Gone. Uh, continuing, this is verse 17, it says, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Yeah, the other of love, and goodwill, charity, kindness, knowing that we're set for the defense of the gospel. What we're, what we're doing is a very humble and precious thing, man. All right, we're doing what's right. All right, because this is a righteous thing. This is just, this is the right thing to do, is to come out here and preach the truth, man. All right, and to wake brothers up. All right, because Paul said that he does everything for the elect's sake. So if I'm not chosen, but at least I could have a hand in waking up brothers that do deserve to be saved, man. All right, and we don't know if we're going to be saved, but there are brothers and sisters out there that do deserve to be saved, man. All right, not because of their own righteousness, just because Yahweh Shimei Hashai chose them to be saved, man. All right, whether that's us or not, we don't know. But we're out here doing this because it's commanded of us to do it, but not only that, but we do it out of free will and love, so like uh, what so-called free will and love because it's the right thing to do, man. All right. This is Romans chapter 13, verse 10. It says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Yeah, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. All right, you ain't over here plotting and scheming, all right, trying to twist the scriptures to use them to your advantage over another man. It worketh no ill to his neighbor. In fact, what, it, what, what love is, is that you see your your brother uh, uh, walking a path that's not convenient for him? You tell him, hey brother, I don't think you should be walking like this. All right, because according to the scriptures, that could that could lead to judgment. That could lead to something bad happening to you later on. All right, and that's actual love, man. It's not love like in the world. It's not a friendship like in the world where you would just kick him back, smoking weed, getting drunk. Maybe you get mad at each other, go in the backyard and. and, and, and and throw hands at each other, body shots, put on gloves. No, it ain't like that, man. We're actually, we're actually on a mission. We're on a quest, all right, to be righteous. And so we're looking out for each other as friends would do. Hey, don't go that way. Oh no, that's not. All right, hey, I went down that way before, and that's not a good path right there, man. All right, that's gonna lead you. That's gonna lead you down some dark ways, man. You know. Go ahead. It says, therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Yeah, love is the fulfilling of the law because if you have love and you're looking out for your brother, that means you're looking out for yourself. That means you know what's right and wrong. And so you have the ability to tell your brother what's right and what's wrong. Man. All right? And so that's the ultimate love that you're not only taking care and watching out for yourself, making sure that you're good, but you're watching out for other brothers that surround you, making sure that they're good. All right? Doing what using your knowledge and experience and giving it to the younger brothers and other brothers that need help in order to lift them up and put them in a better position in life, man. Because this thing is the endurance. Like this brother always brings out, we're in the end game. Hey, but we've been in the end game for a long time now, man. And so we still got to survive here. And so we still got to look out for each other and make sure that we don't slip and fall and fucking be destroyed before the actual end comes, man. That's why brothers got jobs, you know? That's why brothers got places, got apartments, got places to live. That's why we ain't trying to live off, uh, uh, trying to live off of the government, you know? Brother, we get government aid, you, you need help, you need help. But we ain't trying to solely live off of the government, man. You got something to say? It says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time, to awake out of sleep. Yeah, this is high time to wake out of sleep, man. All right, World War III is, World War III is on the on the verge of happening. 
All right, the 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 debt bubble is growing. All right, all these other countries they're holding on to a piece of America's debt. So World War Three, what's going to happen? All these countries are going to cut ties with America, which America's cutting ties with all these countries right now. And so they're going to drop all that debt, and then what's going to happen is this place is going to collapse, man. And it's going to go into spiral into complete chaos. And you see that already happening in different cities around America where you see that the, the immigration population is rising. And like San Francisco is turning into a third world country, so it looked like a third world country, man. All right? There's shit all over the streets. There's needles. There's homeless people all over the streets, man. All right? Just bug outs everywhere. That place is so bugged out that some straight up crazy bugged out shit is just normal. You could jump in somebody's face and scream and they won't even flinch. They won't even move a muscle. They'll just keep walking as if it didn't even happen. People are so used to madness out there. That's how you know this place is deteriorating. You got Trump that's cutting ties with all these different countries. Telling everybody like, all right, if you if you trade with this person, we're gonna cut you off. Which is all tariffs and um, sanctions. All right, which those are all threats. That's basically America making threats, saying you can't trade with them, and they can't trade with you, and he can't trade with us, and you can't trade with... And so they're trying to monopolize the world, but America's losing its grip, man. Hey, even what they're doing with uh, Iran right now, they're telling that the whole world and Iran that you can't sell oil to nobody. Yep. That's an act of war. Everything that America does, sanctioning, unlawfully invading, and... Uh, 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 What's the word I'm looking for? This locale, I'll just say that. Disregarding the, another country's sovereignty, those are all acts of war, man. You know? Yeah, that's the main, that's the main source of income from Iran, is their oil sales, man, because they're rich in oil. All these countries want deals with Iran. And so for America to say, none of you guys can do that, you basically, what you're doing is you're trying to starve Iran to death, man. Same what they were doing with Russia, telling Russia, oh, you can't, sell any gas to Europe, and Europe is all in the uproar because, you know, Europe is the bottomless pit, and it needs that gas, and it was during the time right before winter, man. Oh, we want you to buy our gas through the uh, Ukrainian, and then the, the, the pipeline of Syria or whatever. That's the whole reason why they invaded Syria in the first place. Yep. They take their resources to set up that pipeline during the uh, Obama administration. Because I believe uh, it's uh, Joe Biden's son that uh, runs that area or whatever, man. Trying to uh, put that pipeline in uh, Syria, man. Ukraine, man. But Russia putting his foot down, man, and being a guard, a defense onto those uh, different nations, man. As uh, Ezekiel the 38 chapter says. Yeah. yeah, because America's trying to take that by force. And Russia's over here, like, being cool with Syria. Because Russia's trying to get that oil too, man. It's all, it's all a battle. <coughs> it's all a battle for, for uh, uh, resources and territory, man. Uh, uh, command and conquer, man. You know, that's what that's what it is. All right. You got something? You got something? Well, I had a, a precept concerning like the doctrine. There more. Right, it's concerning the doctrine, and you know, you gotta stay on the right doctrine, man. But you know, I was. Just, Open up camp, you saw you just say you saw us trying to change it, you know. Go ahead. This is uh first Timothy chapter six, and I'll just start at the top. It says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of honor, that the name of Yahweh and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise it, because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of Adawan Yahweh Shah Mashiach, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, even evil surmises perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. 
Yeah, and that's what that's what you know. You got all these different Israelite debate debates, and that's 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 nothing but uh, uh, causing confusion, man. All right, because y'all about me all side not the author of confusion. So you trying to debate? You trying to have a debate with somebody that doesn't know the truth? That don't even make sense. That's like oil and water, man. It's just not. It, there's no, there's no agreement that's gonna come. All right, was the Amos three and three two can't walk together unless they be agreed on it. <clears throat> and so you have these people that are perverting the doctrine, all right, and it's leading to nothing but what vain di disputations, all right, uh, uh, a lot of back and forth, a lot of backfighting, a lot of backlash, a lot of vain babbling that leads to no edification to the point where you got brothers just like, oh yeah, fuck this dude, fuck this camp, and then that's that's stupid, man. What, what is it? It gets it gets degraded. All the way, and that's what Esau wants by setting up these false camps, man. Esau wants the truth to be degraded to a fucking uh, a sitcom, man, to a Jerry Springer show, you know what I mean? Look at these stupid Israelites over here fighting with each other, bickering about about, about this and that, you know? <clears throat> that's not edifying, man. We're out here just to preach the doctrine. We're out here to preach the truth. I got straight to This is Proverbs. 30 and 5, every word of Yahweh by Shemi Shai is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Anybody want to break that down? Read again. Ah. So, Proverbs 30 and 5, every word of Yahweh is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Yes, yeah, so every word of Yahweh by Shemi Shai is, is pure. Okay, and something that's pure, it, 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 it's true, all right? So the words that the Lord speaks, everything contained in here, like we say, like the scriptures say, uh, is going to happen, man. Everything's going to happen. Everything's going to come to pass that was written in these scriptures. And the Lord is also a, a shield, a protector to those that believe in him, man. So if you believe in this truth, there shouldn't be a reason why, why you're scared to come out and preach his word. You know, and, and, and there should, and, and, and also, uh, you, you also shouldn't be uh, collecting guns and, and you know, uh, putting things aside for that kind of thing. You know, because you do got other Israelite camps that talk about uh, prepping. You know, prepping and, and buying medicine and uh, you know bug out bags and buying guns and all that. We don't do that, man. We we. Used to, believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that he's going to protect us because of what his words say, you know the scriptures say that tomorrow we'll worry about the things of itself, yeah. you don't even know if you're going to make it to 12 o'clock tonight man. Yeah. so why meditate on things that is out of your control both sides going to seal uh, your instructions while you're sleeping then you're going to perform his will man. yeah because oh. even if you do uh, prep alright, you Buy uh, all these guns and bullets and medicine and and food. You're doing all that prepping, just like the brother quoted the scripture. Let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. You actually don't even know what's in store for you tomorrow. Okay, you you might go to sleep healthy. All right, you you eat the best foods. You take care of your body as much as you possibly can. But you, it's not even guaranteed that you're going to wake up tomorrow. Okay, because if the Lord wants you back in the spirit world, there's nothing you can do no matter what, how, how much you take care of yourself, all right, or what kind of weapons you got. If the Lord wants you up there tomorrow, you're going to be up there. Just like when uh, Saul, Saul went to inquire of that witch, the witch of Endor, he went to inquire of her uh, uh, to summon uh, Samuel. And what did, what did Samuel tell Saul? He said, what'd you do? Wake me up, bring me back from my sleep. He said, tomorrow you and your son are going to be with me. So you know, if the Lord wants you, your spirit, you're going to be up there, man. Yeah. This is the same uh, book, though. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Yes, yeah, so all that prepping you're doing, you can't take that, that when you leave, man. 
all that prepping you're doing, all right, yeah. who's to say that you could even pass it to your children, man? You know? Because you got a lot of these agencies out here that'll take everything from you, man. Won't give nothing to your children, man. You know? Or have them all fighting each other in court to see who claims it. And then at the end of it, nobody gets it because they got to pay lawyers back. Okay? I'll continue with what you had on. Says, verse 8, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Yeah, so having food and raiment, you should be content. All right? That's really all you need. You know, you don't need to buy all kinds of stuff that you don't need. You just need food, clothing, and a place to live, man. That's all you need, as the scriptures say. Be content, all right? Be happy with just those things. Food and shelter, man. Food, shelter, and clothing. All right? And, uh, and such things, you how about some you know, can show his power, man. Because you got, you got this guy that's got, you know, 20 years of military training. He's been prepping his whole life. He's got a bunker, all right? His house is a fortress. And you, you got nothing but your clothes, a loaf of bread, and a Bible. And the Lord will, and the Lord will maneuver you through all the madness. And this guy that prepped his whole life get killed in the first, in the first uh, uh, rundown, man. The first wave, man. You know, that's the way Yahweh Bashem outside likes to roll. So, uh, Second Ezra chapter sixteen, verse forty, it says, "O my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle, and in those evils." Be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Yeah, so he said, make you ready, but be be as pilgrims on the earth. All right, meaning that you don't have a you don't have a home, you don't have a solid place to, to live, man. You're basically a wanderer, like a nomad. And when you look into it, that's what the prophets basically were. They were no they were nomads because you look at uh you look at um what happened, I believe, in Second Kings with Elijah. He was tell he was telling them tell the tell the king. I, that I'm going to show myself to him. And he said, no, nah, nah, I'm not going to do that because the Spirit is going to have you go some, to take you to some, take you somewhere else. You know, so the prophet never knew what he was going to be doing or where he was going to be going. It was all based off what Yahweh told him to do, man. Case in point, uh, Jonah. Gone. You didn't want to preach in Nineveh, but the well threw his ass up on the shores in Nineveh anyway, you know? Same thing with us, man. We don't know where we're going. We don't know where we're headed, man. All right, we're not here establishing a house and a family, and I got 10 acres of land, and I got a great job and a pension, and I'm just planning to be here for 100 fucking years. That's not how. That's not. That's not our mentality, man. Our mentality is we don't know what's gonna happen day to day, man. I could be walking down the street and somebody recognize me and blow my head off, man. You could be walking down the street when the evil days come, when things start getting heated up. You could be walking down here about to go to the store and a pipe bomb blows your fucking face off, man. You know? Because you're going to start having that type of shit. People leaving bags in, in places and then they, they explode. Alright, because this political tension is on the rise. But with that, it breeds what you call them, man, freedom fighters. People like that. Organizations that are for their political parties. Alright? And what you would call today terrorist groups, okay? These things are going to start forming on a high level, plus gang violence is going to be on the rise. Where you're going to have different gangs fighting over territories, man. It's going to be, it's going to start getting really crazy out here, man. And you have no assurance of life in this place. This is the valley of the shadow of death, man. Says, he that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth as one that will lose. He that occupieth merchandise as he that have no profit by it. And he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth as if he should not reap. So also he that planteth the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. They that marry as they, as they that shall get no children. And they that marry not as the widows. And therefore they that labor, labor in vain. For strangers shall reap their fruits, and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. For captivity and famine shall they get children. Hey, going back to 2nd Ezra 16 and 70, man. 
They shall spoil those that fear the name of the Lord, cast them out of their houses, take their goods. And that's why it tells you to live and live like that, because the evil day is coming when Esau is going to come through and spoil everybody, man. All right? Take people up and uh, uh, take them to concentration camps. All right? And so you got to have that mentality, man. That mentality that at any given moment, everything could just be taken. All right? You can have all the riches in the world, but it shouldn't be shit to you. Because at the end of the day, as the scriptures say, the day cometh uh, when the earth shall burn as an oven, man, in which all the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And so none of this stuff means anything. Everything that these people hold on to that means something to them really doesn't mean shit, man. And because Yahweh Shai said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away, man. So really these words, this, these scriptures, this truth is the only thing that actually has any weight or meaning in life, man. Because this is the only thing that's, that's real. All right, everything else is fake, man. And it's, and it's not fake in the sense that, you, you know, it's invisible like you can, like a hologram or something. You could, you could taste it, feel it, touch it. You believe that it's real. But the, the thing is, is that it could be, this store could be open today. Tomorrow will be shut down. All right, we've seen, we've seen that many times. We've seen stores that have been open since we were kids uh, uh, just shut down overnight, man. All right, you've seen uh, uh, restaurants that came into business for like a week and then they were closed afterwards. So really, not, nothing here is is is, is, a, is a sure thing, man. Going back to what you got so far. Going back to what we saw. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, it says, For the mystery of the iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, who Yahweh Shai shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, and for this cause Yahweh shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lot. And that's what that's what that's what we're living in. We're living in the times of a strong delusion. Alright? That you live in this free country where you can do whatever you want, you can be whoever you want. Alright, you could uh, open up a business and flourish and, and become rich and wealthy and powerful. That's all the, that's delusional man. The American dream, right? It's all it's not real. Alright, none of it's real. Hey, but that wicked is being revealed. We're out here telling you that it's not real, man. This is all a lie. It's, it's, it's fake. All right? Really what this place is is a death trap. All right? Just packaged with a pretty boat. That's it, man. You're really in a slaughterhouse that looks like a fun house, man. All right? It's the same thing as that, that Pinocchio scene. All right? When they were all drinking and smoking and doing drugs and turning into donkeys and shit, man. That's where, that's where we're at, man. I think it's a nice ass hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's something within it that, you know, makes you uh, ready for coming there, man. Well, I got more, man. Verse uh, 12, it says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. That they all might be damned and believe not the truth. Alright, so you despise us, you look at us funny. It's because you don't believe the words that we're saying, man, because we, we don't trust in our own word. We don't trust in our own heart, man. All right? So you shouldn't trust in, in, in the things that come out of our mouth. You should trust the things that come out of this book, man. That's why it tells you to search the scriptures and see that these things are true, man. And hey, when the scoffer comes, what's one of the main things that they always say? Well, I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. I want to hear what you think, you know? But what we think is what the scriptures think. There ain't no in-between, man. It's just all the way right, you know? But uh, there's more. It uh, says, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yahweh for you, brethren, beloved of Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh have from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. And that's what we're hoping for. All right, we're hoping that we're sanctified by Yahweh Shai. 
you know, for our belief in the truth, man. All right, because this is an act of faith to come out here and preach. All right, anybody can see us. All right, my parents, our people that I work with. All right, my boss. You know, some an, an, an enemy, somebody that hates you, somebody that might want to kill you. Anybody can see us, man. All right, and not, not only that, but there's a, there's going to be a time of great persecution for those. That